three is now open. First thing on the agenda, Whippo Willow Estates. Good. Step right up. Yeah, why don't you stand over there and state your name for the record. And My name is Richard Inconis. I work for D'Angelo Incorporated, the new owners of Whippoorwill Estates. Yep. Or Partridge and Cardinal, the 20 lots. I was here before you about a year and a half ago uh, when I worked for the previous owner and taught you. And uh, I asked you to waive the roof recharge system. And you did so. And you asked me if I wanted to waive the whole subdivision. At the time, I didn't have the need to. And now we're moving forward with the subdivision and the soils are poor and they don't, don't percolate. So I'm asking if we can have the 20 lots waived. What we've discussed, I think, since uh, since then was if you, if you have an engineer uh, just put together a letter stating the soil types because, Chris, you were, uh, you had mentioned that the state had changed with soil types you won't you don't need to have basically the when they would type D soils infiltration it wasn't required when that was done and those are I mean I've spent days and days and days over the years for a hundred different customers digging on that property before there was sewer yeah. and it was just it was hard to cement and, uh, so all you have to do is put together a letter mm -hmm. but from an engineer right and have him state the reasons why uh, that the roof drains, you're looking to have a uh, plan was already approved, so they would have to ask for a minor modification to the existing subdivision plans. He'd say based on my testing, the soil maps might call them sea soils, which is absolutely wrong, but so he'd say based on field testing, I feel the D soils, and at the time, no infiltration would have been required. Modification. And that way, there you can, you know, set up a uh, meeting for the next uh, yep. for the next scheduled planning board meeting, which is the. Uh, Would you like twentieth the, the letter in advance of that meeting? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you? Yep. You can drop it off for sure. to Maryland, uh, to Maureen sure. to the planning office, and that way, there we can put it on the schedule. Excellent. All right. Okay. Sounds fair. Thank Very you. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, Mr. Mastery, your request for abbreviated site plan. Yes. Please state your name for the record and where you are. Uh, where you are looking to? Yep. My name is uh, Rick Mastery. Um, my business is at uh, this particular one is one two five five New State Highway in Rainham. We have two copies here. What was that address again? I'm sorry. One. One two five five. Interstate Highway. Uh, this is where the Saturn building is. One forty four is to the just at the top. This is the back piece that's in yellow, and um, this is similar to the actually even a smaller one than the one that I asked for before. This is a thirty four by twenty two foot freestanding steel building. Um, in the past, we've used a lot of these storage containers for excessive parts and all kinds of things. And um, quite honestly, besides that they aesthetically look horrible, can't really run any electricity to them, and they, they leak a lot because you're buying them from another vendor. Um, so we like to use this building for a little overflow storage. A lot of times we have um, outside vendors, like we had somebody today that came in that does um, refurbishing of like aluminum wheels on cars obviously with the weather being the way that it is right now that's a non-issue but in the winter um, this is a great place to have a vendor come in put an alarm system that kind of stuff because we always have to give them a productive stall when we do something like that it would have no facilities other than just a electricity going to it uh, similar to the building that you approved for me on Brookside Circle when we changed, it used to be 600, under 600, 600 square feet or less. You didn't need to even be here. I think it was 1,200. And now it's gone up. I yeah. think it was 1,200, which you're clearly under. So I don't even think you need abbreviated site plan. I think you just need a letter saying you don't need site plan. Okay. Right? So what's the size? I mean, it's under 1,200 square feet. 34 to be here. by 22. It's nice seeing you and everything. <laughs> but it's, it's under, 
it's about 700 square feet it's just just more than half of yeah. the 1200 well that's the way I did it before and that one was just under 1200 so I just want to make sure I went through the process the right way yeah. now this did you, know, you have as this? long as it doesn't require extra parking this, that, or the other yeah thing. did you have this uh, this drawing done to allow for this building is that is no that's presently there the black top is presently there I just uh, it's a Rick mastery drawing in there. so now what is in this yellow block three parking spaces so you're going to lose you're losing three parking spaces. Now, what were those designated? Now, this says storage area, snow yeah. storage. So that's the, the snow storage is the else is on the, the land the side. We would push that. We would plow that off into the to the. Uh, so, if you put the building there, are you going to be able to still? Yeah, well, your as you can see to the right there, uh, on the where the Nissan store is, there's snow storage over there. So, we generally push to the middle and then push it over the edge that way. Eric, any questions? I don't have any questions. I was thinking if he gave us a letter that said he was putting up the building of X number of square feet and um, that he was losing three parking spaces and we gave him a letter saying that um, he was less than the 1200 so he didn't need to come in for site plan. He could build it as of right and that we find that the loss of the three parking spaces is is uh, okay and that he still has sufficient parking, um, he'd be able to go get a building permit. Make that motion. Second. Uh, second for discussion. Marilyn, hey. The only thing I would think about is circulation and <coughs> it has it ha does it have any effect upon um, when cars are brought in and taken off trailers? Those are the only other things I can think of that would affect them. Taken off trailers, how do you mean? You know, if, if you remove, where are they required to park to unload um, new cars? Okay, does affect, yeah, actually. Does it affect that? Does it affect, it on it? you know? Well, yeah. this, this, this plan was, you know, the original plan, and uh, as you can see, it does say truck route there, but honestly, we don't have any drop-offs there. They're all dropped off over on the Nissan side for both, for both stores. So it would probably, probably be a good idea to put that into Yeah, put that in the letter, Incorporate too. that into okay. the letter. And I would like to label this building I think we should put a some label to it storage okay. I was thinking I the Android building I yeah I was thinking <laughs> the same thing <laughs> I think it should get uh, I think it should get labeled only because I uh, I would not want to see this become uh, a body shop or oh yeah do you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. it, I put proposed building for storage, and we keep this as better. Yep. Put that in the letter too for storage only. Yeah. And that way, they would, we well, all I, agree I, with the I, building. I explain that it's storage, but it's also like I said. Let's say that we have a vendor that comes by that's going to put an alarm system in the car. It happens a lot. We sub out a lot of things. They take a productive stall, so we would put them in there for an hour to put to do a particular mm -hmm. job. That's why we would have electricity just, in there. I think more importantly, that's. Uh, that's a subcontractor of yours. I think more importantly, not to have public access, not to have okay. public use. Okay, gotcha. You start getting public uh, people going in there to, to view whatever. Gotcha. So I think if you can add that into the letter, your employees are going to have to access it, mm -hmm. even if it's a shed. Yep. So that's fine, but not to have public access uh, for the public use. Okay. Yeah, only employees and subcontractors will have access to public and not be allowed in the building. So if you if you do that, then uh, motion was made. If you can prepare that letter and then you can swap letters. Do you, want, do you want someone to look at it, like Burke or something? It's a, I think oh, how Marine, fast do you need Marine it? Can handle it? How fast do you need it? I can do it next week. Okay. So why don't you why don't you do the letter and then we'll uh, okay. we can prepare one and then we'll take a look at it. Okay. Any other questions? So that motion was made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Thank you. Very good. Rainham flea market, abbreviated site plan, public care notice. 
we just read this notice? Yeah, we're going to. Uh, yeah, it's a public meeting notice in accordance with provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40A and Article 13 of Rainham Zoning Bylaws. The Rainham Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Thursday, September 6, 2012, at 6:15 p.m. at Rainham Veterans Memorial Town Hall, 558 South Main Street, Rainham, Mass, on application for abbreviated site plan approval submitted by. Craig Dutra, agent on behalf of Rainham Flea Market, to allow a carport structure in the middle of the flea market's parking lot to hold 760 solar panels to produce electric, so I think electricity for the building. Locust, 1 Judson Street, Assessors Map 14, Lot 164, Rainham. Um, a copy of the application plan are available for viewing at the town clerk's office and planning board office, 558 South Main Street, during usual schedule business hours, any person wishing to be heard or interested in this submittal should appear at the time and place designated. Rainham Planning Board, Daniel J. Andre, Chairman. Thank, Thank you. you. Henry, could you maybe just shut that door? Um, this came in front of us at our last meeting and it was decided that they could come in as abbreviated site plan. Seeing that it was basically just a roof structure with poles holding it up and it wasn't going to interfere with the existing building the existing traffic flow or any of that um, at the last meeting we did say or we did ask to get information about digging a access or digging the electrical trench to the building to make sure that that was um, clearly stated that it was going to be time of that to be completed, started and completed, that it wasn't going to interfere with the weekend um, Pedestrian. weekend traffic for the flea market people. So um, I think that was about all we discussed at the last meeting. And in the back of the plans, you'll see. Please. I'm sorry. Uh, so you may state your name for the record. Craig Dutra. Monroe Distributing. Okay. Uh, Lyndon Campos from Monroe Distributing. All right. And uh, you can get right up to the podium and explain what you are uh, proposing here. And well, as you requested a uh, trenching detail, you'll find on the second to last page, um, it is proposed to trench on, on Monday and be completed and backfilled by Tuesday. So for anybody that's watching, this is the Rainham Flea Market piece of property in the back parking area. That is where this structure is going to be placed. It's 423 feet long, 33 feet wide. And it's basically going to be a big, large carport that's going to hold solar panels. Correct. Um, we have an 18-inch wide 18 wide, 24 inches to top of PVC conduit, C trench detail T1. Next page. Now, nice, easy to read lettering. I know. I almost can't read it. I'm, I'm, I'm so oh, big. Okay. Jesus. Well, that's pretty basic. That's pretty I mean, I, I don't know. You know, okay. that is what we asked. Uh, what we asked to have on the plan for this to come in as an abbreviated site plan. Dennis is gonna. They're gonna be pulling out a billing permit for. I assume the footings just for the columns. And let's see, where's the problem? They'll probably put a structure itself, right? Well, yeah, they'll get the bill they'll get a bill permit for the whole thing, but I'm I'm just looking at inspection wise if um, part of this if we can have the planning board be notified or the planning board office be notified when this is being um, 
erected so one of us can take a ride take a ride by there and just check I would like to make sure that the day that the digging is going to be done that you notify the planning board office also um, because the wire inspector I just want to make sure that everybody it is going to be done is going to be done like you say in the plans right within a day um, so I would just make sure that you know any scheduling that you do with the town that you, you be very careful in making sure all the schedules are, are done and checked and, and it's done correctly only because you know Friday is a half a day <coughs> There'll be two processes. There'll be an electrical trench, and there'll be also a footing trench, which won't be at the same time, right? but two different aspects. Now, once the electrical trench is dug, I assume the building inspector would already be out there to inspect the footings. You're going to do the footings first? Um, yes, we're going to do the footings first. Okay. That'll determine. It's approximately a 100-foot trench from the, um, the carport to the building, and that's going to be definitely dug in one day, inspected, piped backfilled yeah. by the next day I would I would say all we would if, if we were notified the when the digging of the trench was going to be done okay we'd you know the building inspector is going to take care of the footings that's not our job right. uh, our job is more making sure that the uh, parking air, parking lot area is you know safe for the safe. public access exactly. absolutely um, Russ any questions Burke? Yes, Henry. There appear to be a lot of people out there. Are they here on this case, and do they want to be heard? As soon as I'm done with the board, I will ask. And okay. I have no problem. No problem. Yeah. Chris? I'm good. Uh, is there anybody here who has questions about solar system? Yes, state your name for the record. Yeah, Ronald Tremblay, and I'm in the butter. I live right in the back of the flea market. Mm -hmm. I was just uh, wondering, uh, Actually, what this thing's going to look like, seeing we're going to be looking right at it. Do you have a? Uh, if you would like, you could come up and we'll show you where it's going to be uh, facing. It's going to look kind of like a, a carport over the parking lot with a slanted roof. This is this is the front of the flea market. This is the back parking lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is the. The 65 foot road he dug straight to my house. Right. Was that to give you access to the flea market on a Sunday? No. <laughs> it wasn't. <He> could. <laughs> um, okay, so this is going right by. Right there. And how high is it going? Can you be? state your name for the record also? I'm Deborah Tremblay. Deborah Tremblay? Yes. This is okay. kind of a 3D yeah. rendering. Yeah, that's a much better. Oh, okay. So it's going to be tilted that way. Yes. Back to its window. Back to its window. Yep. Where is your property? 99 Rachel right Drive, here. right down this 65 foot road. Okay. okay, that's it. Comes out onto Warren Street. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't come out. No. Rachel Drive. No, uh, backs up to our property. Backs up to our property. No, but Rachel Drive comes out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So that's where it's going, right okay. in the back. It's not going to interfere with any of the parking. There is still going to be parking underneath the canopy. Okay. And the traffic flow is going to stay the same. Uh, nothing on the parking lot is, is going to be affected. How high uh, is it going to be? Out? It's okay. actually tilting, I think, away from you. It's tilting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The height of the. Yes. Uh, I would have bought it to these He's folks. He's in the butter as well. <laughs> Can you Bill Kennedy. Your name? Bill, Kennedy. <laughs> Bill Kennedy. 81 Rachel Drive. Uh, the height, excuse me, the, oh, the height of the total structure is 17 feet. 17. Our the view would be, what, the area would be 17 feet. So you've got 12 feet on one side and, yeah. 17 on the other. And how tall is the building that's there now? The actual flea market? Yeah. Roughly. 25, I, I don't. 25, 20 feet. 20 feet. 40 feet, yeah. So from your point of view, you're probably going to block a little bit of the flea market look and see nice panels or whatever. Okay. Okay. Very good. Yes. Yeah, Represent on a butter at 500 South Street West. Yes. I'd just like to get a location of this. Thank you. And how is it affecting any possible? This is, a, this is a kind of a 3D. 
That's the front of the flea market building. Excuse me. Sir, can we have your name again? Ed Bishop. Thank you. Address? Uh, 896 Pleasant Street. This is the front of the flea market building. Mm -hmm. This is the rear. And this is, would be the solar panels. Okay. It's like a carport. Instead of shingles or a roof, it's got solar panels on it. This is a big overview picture. There's the panels here, and here's the, here's the flea, okay. flea market right here. It's been going on the back of the parking lot. So none of the parking will be affected. Affected. Nope. And how do they propose to buttress this if the car takes it out? Is there any safety sight in the mud? Uh, it's got a. Engineer? Well, it's I beams. It's a. Uh, what was it? Ten by fifty I beams. Yeah, three, 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 uh, Do you? Three foot beers. Yeah, we can. Uh, are you all set with the plans? Because you can ask the questions. You can ask me questions, and I can. Uh, They're twelve by fifty, so that's a twelve inch I beam. Um, fifty pounds per foot, so that's a pretty beefy beam. Okay. And that's beefier than any structure holding up a wall. Most part. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Oh, just as long as it's not affecting the parking because, you know, that is an issue down there. It's a big, big, big issue. You know, 200 spaces have been eliminated. So. Well, again, I, I mean, uh, this, what's in front of us tonight is not going to affect the parking. Okay. Is there anybody else that uh, has any questions? No? Members of the board? Chris? Yeah. Well, make, a, make a motion. Um, we approve. Uh, is there a site plan for. Would this be the title? A Precision Machine Company? Oh. No, that's the uh, manufacturer of the, uh, um, of the uh, steel. Okay. Motion to approve a site plan for the Rainham flea market for the solar post assembly. It's associated social so panels and carport uh, proposing the rear of the building. And a date on it? Uh, this plan is dated 9-6-11. Any engineer or anything? Um, just AA Precision Machine Company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I second it. Second it for discussion. Um, as part of the approval of I would like to just add in there about having the planning office notified on the um, prior to the digging of the trench for the electrical service to go into the building. I'll second the amendment. S did you get that? Is there any condition? Is there any? Uh, it's part of the motion. Part of the motion. Yeah. Okay. Any other thing? Condition. Anything yeah. else? Something on that one. Okay. That motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 And? Chris, when you uh, said the name of the plan, we have these plans by AA Precision Machine Company. Did you also get the ones by Monroe Distributing at the back? No. Okay. So I would make a motion that we add um, in our in the name of the plans the um, Rainham Flea Market top view with panels. Um, two sheets by Monroe Distributing Clean Energy and Electrical Solutions dated um, 4 slash 29. Is that the solar panel makers? Mm -hmm. What pages are on there? They're the last two pages. It's actually two plans. Yeah, one of them is more for the structural and the solar panels and one's for the electric. Which is Monroe. Well, that was so the motion now includes the change of title. Right. So we need to vote on that amendment then. Right. So what was that seconded? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. Now we have first to motion was now the motion has been amended twice, so now we vote on the motion as amended. And that was seconded by Henry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. So there are no conditions? Yeah. Other than Oh, just, yeah, I figured we put that right into the motion. And Do you yes, have Marilyn? No. Um, I had a conversation. Yeah. My assumption is that, that 
plans are done by our licensed electrical engineer. So I'm noticing we've been getting involved with the solar bylaw um, for ground mounted large scale photovoltaic. And the, the size of those are begin at 250 kilowatts. Correct. In terms of ground mounted. And this you indicated was 200 kilowatts, correct? 177 be right. Uh, the only thing I'm, I'm asking questions about, when we looked at several, a couple of samples of um, ground mounted, I went out and looked at them. There seems to be a lot of attention paid to keeping the electrical pieces away from the public. In other words, there's a lot of uh, cha large chain link fences and warnings and things. So I just, my only concern is, in this case, if it's not reviewed by, uh, an, you know, an electrical engineer on the town's behalf, I just was um, not sure that we wouldn't want to have that extra protection for the public. The other issue was the structure. The, they, they, they were too heavy to place on the building, so there is a structure where people are going to be milling about underneath these, this structure. Do you want to have... Well, I think the structure part is going to go to the building department. <coughs> I think Dennis. That's fine. Yeah, it's just I, all I'm thinking about is oh, safety. Oh no, no, yeah, I understand. But we're I think up, we're I, going a whole different, you know. Yeah, and we're looking at we're looking at the traffic flow. We're looking at what it's going to do to the existing park, and uh, I think this structure is fully going to be. Dennis is going to is going to want certified engineered plans. They're going to have to have a certified engineered stamp, even though the town is not going to be looking at. If we sent, if we had this reviewed by Judith Nitsch, he wouldn't even be looking at the footings. That's not something that he would be looking at. That's a structural engineer. That's something with the building department. And again, that's, but again, that is all, that's all structural and that all has to go through Dennis. I think the only, the only thing would be, uh, like the gentleman asked if somebody hit the pole, what's going to happen, you know, to the structure and it's a pretty heavy duty pretty heavy duty structure to hold up those those units. It's not up to us to determine the weight and the square footage and all that. So um, I'm confident Dennis will make sure that, you know, I'll they bring it up because it seemed like it was danger, danger when you went anywhere near these solar on the ground solar. It was seemed to be a real effort. And I wonder if they're if it's a danger, danger or the reason why they fence them in is to keep people away from them so they don't damage them. They should have fenced in those ones in Carver on the highway. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I, you know what I'm saying? I almost, I almost think, they were. I almost think it's, it's for, yeah, you know, front of them, not behind them. you can, you might look at it as a safety issue, but I think it's more for protecting the, the cost and the expense of them putting them up. So kids aren't going in there and making a mess. And this is actually safer than it's higher. Well, time. you actually have a point, but this is a 17 feet in the air. So rules out the so. so-called safety factor on that point. And these columns are like 40 times stronger than a typical light pole in a parking lot that you can hit. Yeah, and, and I'm, you know, like I said, I'm <coughs> sure Dennis is going to have yeah, to make sure, sure a structural engineer stamps. We're all I'm sure stamps. the electric yep. outside no, is going to be out there anyway. So. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's it. You guys are all set. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. Is uh, Metro not coming in again? No. Oh, that's a And we have a letter here, Metro West, um, let's see, Brian Dunn, mm -hmm. trying to get drainage to work, so run off to Route 44 and Church Street, we'll need to, uh, so we'll need to continue for two weeks. So they're still working on the plans for the corner of Church Street and Route 44 for the Metro West Volkswagen dealer. Um, so we make a motion that we extend or continue the public hearing until September 20th. Um, let's put it on for the same time. We can do it uh, at 620. Suggest to hire a professional engineer to design the drainage. September 20th at 620. <clears throat> And Maureen, for this is all we have, which is the email. Yes. We can just sign this sign as part of the. Yes. So that is continued until, as I said, 620 on September 20th. That also be on the same, same one. Mm. 
I'll write it, write it on there for the, yeah. You can do that. And the time to act is not an issue? November 30th. So you can just sign that and pass that down. So we have uh, executive session coming up, but before we do that, uh, we seem to have been moving right along this evening, which is a good thing. Town planner update, you have nothing on there. Is there anything that you would like to add? Well, Burke and I met with the solar bylaw committee and uh, made some progress on that front. Um, I gave a tour to uh, Marie Smith and Carol Sullivan who wanted to see a solar, a large-scale solar project, so we went out to 80 make pieces. We looked at their 25-plus acre solar. And who's that? 80, 80 make piece. Where's that? It's in Wareham. And um, it was done by the same company that had, we had talked to previously. Yep. Um, so we went to like, took a look, take a look at that. and. Um, it's quite impressive. It's, um, and I would suggest if, if we do, it'll be brought before the planning board. And, you know, I'll be glad to make the same arrangements to the planning board to take a look at it because a lot of things were brought to you know it, it, when it's in front of you and it's that larger scale. Right. You're picturing that in your the, the field next to your house. I mean, so um, I think we need to be moving forward, cognizant of the fact that in an industrial setting it's fine. But was very very big so now, did, um, when you were out there for that visit did you have a chance to speak to anybody there and did you just go oh, to yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chris fine. <laughs> did you talk about something. anything about the solar or did you just we just talked whisper <laughs> 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 he answered the questions um, that he could answer and but the other questions had been answered already by the engineers who showed up at our solar bylaw committee which was they were very helpful there was uh, they provided some good information going forward with the bylaw. Okay. One you went and looked at, it's in an area that's primarily cranberry bogs and not a lot of people living around there. That's right. Um, after looking at that, what kind of buffer do you think there should be? Um, I do think that there should be enough of a buffer that it's screened from view in a residential area, not maybe not quite so much in a, in a business or industrial area, but clearly it's not something you'd want to be looking up for, from your bedroom window. The other thing that appeared to us is that if you, even if you provide a buffer, there was one location that has been proposed that some of the homes sit relatively high um, from the lot that's being considered that's going to be coming before the board. And you will be able to see it, even with a buffer, you'll be able to see. In, in fact, Marie, in Marie's view, she knew the, she knew the location. So you, you're probably going to end up with those kinds of converse, comments from residential. They're not going to want to look at this. Where, where is this one? I don't know. There's, I think there was a proposal on Pleasant. I don't even know. It was, do you know? Oh, it was no, why is all in? I think so. Yeah, it's because that's why that Brian Dunn came in the other day. Yeah, less. Uh, when he passed away, he had two nieces, and he ended up will giving it, uh, signing it over to Wayne Arms a few months before he died. Not signing over, but just will. He was there. Mr. Arms was there. So uh, all I'm saying is that it just—it seems to be, you know, in terms of any other zoning, it, except for um, farm and forest too. We want to talk about that, but it's. It's, you can't really deny it. I mean, the, the state makes it clear you can't unreasonably regulate unless it affects public safety uh, or welfare, public safety or what, their welfare. Well, you can say it's their welfare if it affects a residence. Mm -hmm. housing you, you could do some fairly mature plantings there that were dense, though. You know, we were talking about Lester's Field, mm -hmm. Lester Field. Pleasant Street, the yeah. log cabin is. Oh, and the less, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, when less passed, Wayne got all the land except the newer log cabin, which Les was nice enough to deed to Dickie Medeiros for a dollar, and he sold the house before he moved in. And then, uh, which he was rather upset about, and then the other one down the right, the Stroney's house, is not part of it. 
so it's all the field behind mm -hmm. it, which is kind of a nice vista from the houses across the street he and Pleasant Street. Randy was at this meeting. He suggested a 50-foot buffer. Now, the, the engineers thought that was extreme. Well, I've been 100. <laughs> I, I think you, a buffer there wouldn't, a planted buffer would be what would matter, not the width of it. Again, I, you know, we're in the process no, I mean, of defining what that buffer should yeah. be. So, I, you know, any suggestions? But okay. it should be screened so that you cannot see it, I would think. Well, we, we have some screening for zoning districts, 25-foot, 50-foot. That's kind of a joke. You can see right through. I mean, uh, whip, uh, what's it's uh, Marioni's thing there, the uh, 55 and over. Marioni? Yeah, that's a, a buffer, you can, but it's not. Right. It, so they maintain a buffer of trees that lose their leaves. <laughs> you know, well, and that's does, another thing, though, too when, much. They, when they were putting in the um, water treatment plant next to my house, and they wanted to put up white pines. Well, I mean, white pine, you have these little needles, and you can see right through them there. It depends, yeah. though. You can, like Norland's apartments, are filled in nice on King Philip. They take a while, yeah. so at it's, times. It's, it's it, I think we said it before. It's gonna be a tricky, it's gonna be, no matter how much you put into it to try to protect everybody or every situation, because just listening, if it is, you know, talking about that, you know, like across the street, looking down, it's going to be impossible to. Yeah, there's, there's nothing you can so how do you, uh, you know, how does that right. fall into well, the screening? Not by not seeing it. I mean, that's kind of. Uh, the other issue is that if, it's, it is. if we if we have areas of zoning that are that only require site plan plan approval, they want to, they want to call it a review. You can't deny it. You can put conditions on it. But uh, Burke suggested that in the residential areas, we include. A requirement to have a special permit. I asked Serpent if you have that, can you actually deny? And they said yes, you can. So you and you can make the case that it affects the welfare of the people that, that are surrounded. So I think there's that option within the residential areas to allow that discretion, and and the whole location is going to be determined by its access to the the electrical connection to the right, MLP right. anyway. You have to allow so, it in every zone. You have to allow it if it's under site plan review. You, you can only place conditions on it. Well, but I mean, can't you say this solar panels are allowed in just a business zone or something like that? You can't unreasonably regulate. You, you could be challenged. But I mean, if you said, okay, it's industrial zone, there's plenty of open, big open <laughs> industrial property. Well, uh, there is on this town in New York. Yeah, I still think there is. 138. Now, if we, if, if it doesn't, um, if it is for all districts, are we going to have something in there? A good, I, a, the one that just came in tonight. That's a private. Is it going to be something separate? Well, this is only for ground-mounted, large okay. scale, and it has to be 250 kilowatts or larger, which is about an acre in oh, size. Okay. And then the, so. even with the buffer, you're adding more. It's probably like five to seven acres. We thought for a, the smallest one, the largest. It, they said is regulated by the fact that they can't do it larger than six megawatts. That is about 25 to 30 acres plus the buffer. Right. It's about five acres per megawatt. Right. So if exactly. you're worried about residential, like, I think you could. I think it's reasonable to say you can't do it in residential and look at it like a commercial use. Well, if you want to do that, you think about how much commercial property we have. There's a bunch of just make it non-residential. I mean, all South Street East. There's all kinds of massive fields out there that are business owned in the back. There's provided, 138. There's all access, of Pine Street. Close access to the um, you know, the connection. There's I plenty think of hundreds of acres thing. left. But provided it has the close access to connection to deliver the electricity. That's their problem. Well, but I think. But then they can say that's unreasonably regulated. But as far as the tax base of the town goes. This is something you could have had a warehouse or a, you know, major tech company come in and instead you're going to have solar panels, the taxes are going to be much, much less. Okay. I mean, I think you could regulate that residential if you wanted. It's, it's a, you know, aesthetically it looks like a huge warehouse. Well, you think? I'm sure that you, uh, Members of that board are, yeah, we're going to be coming are, back look, again. are looking at all of the all the alternatives yeah. and all the see, options. See if you could find a town that 
regulated out of residential. Oh. Um, Dartmouth tried that and then uh, they changed their mind, I think, because they wanted it only in business, but I think that they realized that it wasn't, it wasn't a, um, because of its location of their, I think it was industrial, commercial, they wanted to keep it in for the same reason, but it wasn't connectable to. Plus, I think that night that we had that meeting here, he read, I think Marie had asked uh, the gentleman from the solar company about that, and he read a section in the state bylaw, I think that stated that it couldn't be. No zoning ordinance or bylaw shall prohibit or unreasonably regulate the installation of solar energy systems or the building of structures that facilitate the collection, except where necessary to protect the public health, safety, or welfare. So the term is unreasonably regulate. We can regulate, but it can't be determined to be unreasonable. So, so if it's determined, or the bylaw that you're preparing says that it's going to be a special permit, we can put conditions on it. You can even deny it. And you can deny it. Yeah. So it's still going to come in front of you. Saying, yeah. So well, if I it's a special permit, really yeah, gives us a lot of, you know, and then, it's to look at it and then we're not shutting it off for yeah. everything, but yet it's, it's up for. And residential may be appropriate in some cases. It may be land that was, it's not applicable for residents, you know, but it would serve a purpose for. So I, I think, you know, Chris's concerns are taken care of by, you know, a special permit. I really do. Yeah. Does it look at each one individually? No, I think I, I think you're right. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, Eric, minutes. Did you have a chance to? I did. I make a motion well, to waive the reading and approve the minutes of August 16, 2012. Wait a second. I think one thing should be added there um, on the back page, second page, paragraph two, um, when we talk about common ownership. I thought Burke had put in there that it should has to remain common ownership, and I think that's an important thing that should be in the minutes. Because if it doesn't remain in common uh, ownership, <clears throat> we're talking about the car dealerships and the offloading of uh, cars uh, on a contiguous piece of property, um, and if that piece of property was sold, there would be no offloading uh, on one of... Uh, was this Metro or Mastria? Metro. Metro's, uh, it, it wouldn't be available <clears throat> on the lock we were talking about. So Burke had put in there, you know, uh, that it has to remain in common ownership. And we could just make that one change, or one addition, I guess. Can we have a second for discussion? We do. Okay. That second. was my discussion. Second. Um, I will second. Mr. Ellis's motion to amend the minutes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now? Uh, motion to accept the minutes as amended. Second. Second. As amended from Mr. Ellis? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're looking at me. <laughs> Scary, like I'm, I'm waiting for something to get. To. <laughs> okay, that was uh, just a quick one, Dan. Thank I, I you, Henry. Me. So, with the Bassett Knoll, it was subject to me looking at the plan. Bassett Knoll. You didn't have. You didn't come up with a number of lots. You just put after discussion. Oh, from the last. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, because I saw some. We had some issues about lots that yeah. well, he used yeah. where, I, where, when it was designed with, with attention basins. Right, and one thing that we, we discussed was if, you know, they came in front of us, they showed us how many lots that they said that they had, and we, you know, we said, well, you know, you can look at the plan, but also if it's determined once we get into that cluster, when it's reviewed by Judith Nitch's office, if they feel that it doesn't meet the number of lots, then we're going to revisit it. Yeah. So we had some miscommunication. The guy called up and I said, we'll bring the plans by my office. So we brought him by the planning board and sat there for a week or so and I'm not going to chase the guy yeah. so we to give work. And he so called and said, have you reviewed it yet? And I said, what are you bringing the plans by? Yeah, so we did leave that uh, a little arrogant you, did, you did sort of approve what they had shown as the number of lots subject to their confirmation either by yeah. Chris okay. or by Nick. Exactly. I did the minutes, and I apologize. I really didn't do as good a job. No, it was. It's it's <laughs> clear. Serious. It's clear that that's the case. 
I just wanted to make yeah. sure. Okay, yeah. okay, I'll All get right, in. So why is, this is the first time I'll get in and amended the minutes. <laughs> I'll, I'll get in and uh, look at it then. Do I have to write all that or are you going to rewrite it? I can add it if you want. Whatever you want. Whatever Henry just said you're adding, right? You want to add it in here? The mobile common ownership? Yeah. <coughs> okay, so scrap these. No, I mean literally now. You, know, and, and oh. you can sign it for the next meeting. Just, okay. No, no, we'll do it the next meeting. Okay. All right, Marilyn. Did a great job in the filling in, <laughs> filling in for Maureen while she was Thank absent you, that evening. I okay. I guess we be letting her take any more time. <laughs> That's right, you are. <laughs> we, are uh, uh, we are going into executive session for discussion, uh, I guess, litigation discussions, mitigation discussions, yeah, potential litigation for Berry Hill, 55 and older uh, development that is off of Pleasant Street. Pine. Yeah, Pleasant and Pine. Um, let's see. Uh, I just notified the uh, video camera to uh, disconnect 